Oh, it's pulling. This is crazy. How about that? Let's hope it's one of the big girls. What a breeze block. Thanks for choosing to watch the video. In this one, we're tench fishing again. And this time we're on a bigger lake, must be nearly 10 acres this place, and uh, allegedly bigger fish. It's taken me a few sessions to get my head around this lake. Uh, on the first one, um, uh, I'm at the deep end of the lake at the moment. I was up the other end, uh, I was fishing more uh, shallower water. And I think that was probably a mistake given that we were still getting quite cold nighttime temperatures. And uh, yeah, all I got up that end of the lake on my ever faithful worm kebab rigs was a couple of small pike. Um, so yeah, it wasn't really a success that one. Since then, I did an overnighter, uh, which was my first overnighter of the year. Uh, really enjoyed it. Um, this time, um, I moved off the worms because of the pike, and I was fishing scaled down carp tactics. Um, and guess what I caught? Yes, you're right, I caught a carp, um, which I was quite surprised about because they, they're quite tricky on this lake. It's a fairly low stock of carp. So yeah, that was a little bit of a surprise. <laughs> So you join me on my third session on the lake. Um, I've started to put the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together and things went a little bit more according to plan. I've had to work this morning and I've come here. It's around about lunchtime. I'm hiding behind an umbrella because you can probably hear it is very, very windy. And again, I'm right on the end of the wind. I've tweaked my approach slightly. Um, I'm fishing worm kebabs on both rods, so the heli kit with the worm kebab that you've seen in my last video, my last tench video. Um, I'm still plugging the combi feeder with uh, krill and squid ground bait, but now instead of maggots in there, I'm actually putting chopped worm. So I'm going all in with worms. Um, I'm also spotting out maggots and casters but not much, not much at all. Like a couple of spots over each rod. Um, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll see, uh, get the impression that because of the mild conditions, they could be up for feeding. So I don't know how long we're gonna be here today. Um, it's now around about one o'clock. Uh, I kind of see how it goes. I might fish through the evening. If I've had a result by a sensible time, then again, I might go home and be with the folks. If I'm struggling, I might stay a little bit longer, uh, but we'll just have to see how it goes. Mm. Got something on. It's literally just spotting, and it took it. Literally took it as it was spotting. I think it could be the tench we're after. Oh, oh, oh. Bring it across this way. Under the other line. That won't be the tench we're after. Definitely feels like it could be. Right on the end of the wind. Feels quite heavy. Look at this wind, isn't this crazy? concentrate in here because they do get quite big. I don't know if it was a coincidence that it went while I was spawning, but that is what happened. Come on, in you come. Oh. Oh, nearly messed that up, but he's in. Whew. Oof. Oh my word. It's a bit windy, so I hope you can uh, hear me all right. But we've managed to get one 
on the worm kebab, heli rig. Uh, it's taking a bit of doing here. Uh, it's just, oh, it's six pound pretty much, bang on. And there he is. So he's not, he's not the monster we're after necessarily, but it is a start, you know, and on a new venue, it's nice to just get off the mark. Uh, has been a bit tricky, but we finally got one. So yeah, really, really pleased to have got that fish. I've got off the mark. It was a lovely male tench. Um, and uh, yeah, feels like we could be onto something. Um, I'd literally only put out like two spots, something like that, and I was in the middle of spotting in actual fact. You know, I might have, you know, put the third spot out and off it went while I had the spot rod in my hand. Now, whether that's got anything to do with it, because like I say, I'd literally only just started spotting when it rattled off, or whether, you know, it's seen the bait falling through the water, I don't know. But um, yeah, let's let's see. Hopefully, with these mild conditions, I've caught it just at the right time where they're, they're up for feeding. Um, after I had that fish, cast the feeder back out, straight away I've put another one spot, just one, you know, uh, but I did manage, and it's always a bit of a risk with one spot, and are you gonna hit it right on the mark? If I hadn't, I might have had to put another one in, but I didn't. I absolutely hit it. I'm only fishing at seven wraps, so it's quite easy to be accurate at seven wraps, isn't it? And I did, I got it right on the, you know, I got the spot right where the bait had fallen, and because I'm, I'm casting the feeder out for the spot over the top, and they've hit exactly the right spot, so I don't even feel like I need to put any more bait than that up. Bearing in mind, this is only one of the smaller spots as well, so it's not even a full spot. It's like just chucking a handful of bait over it, really, or a couple of handfuls. So, yes, it's still early. You know, it's you know, it's only about two. Uh, we've we've got plenty of time here to hopefully get another one or two. Well, I shouldn't really say two. Get another one, and maybe it'll be that big one that we've come to this venue for. Um, yeah, I always knew this one was going to be a little bit tougher, um, but the tench are bigger and yeah, hopefully we can, we can get that like eight or nine pounder or, or could we even dream of a double? <laughs> Pulling. It must be right down near those that corner, I think. There we go. That is a good one in the net. He's all right for now. Just leave him there. First thing to do, get some bait out. Right, so there's a spawn, look. That fish is all right in the net. First thing to do is get some bait out, put some maggots out and some casters onto the spot. A nice, easy cast this as well. Only about seven wraps on the spot, seven and a half on the rods. Ah, just as well in this wind. Or concentrate because yeah that's bottom right okay so this is a little bit loopy because i've got one in the net down there and the other one's gone i didn't think that would happen i am really on that bait you know i have to tighten this up a little bit this is crazy that is the only problem if it's kicking off you know, I unhook the fish and get the rod back out, but while I'm getting the rod out, the other one went. So I think 
we're gonna have to not do that because it's, go it's going off a bit too crazy. Lovely bend in the rod, look. Oh, uh, yeah, it's another good one. Right, got to get this in while there's another one in there. Oh, there we are. Oh, Christ, it's going crazy now. Right, that's not ideal, so let's sort them out really quick. How about that? Struggling on here, and all of a sudden it's come good. Put in a bit of bait, and it's gone a bit crazy. This is crazy. Let me show you. So we've got two tench here. Uh, the other rod went. And there we go, there's the first one. I'll just quickly show you him. They're both upper sixes, just short of seven. Stunning, stunning fish. And here's the other one that's a little bit bigger. Such beautiful, beautiful fish, the tench. Look at that. Aren't they stunning? Beautiful, beautiful fish. Let's get them back. Mainly just doing maggots and casters. I reckon they might be up for a bit of a feed. I'm not going to put tons out. Like th sort of three over each rod, I reckon. That's pretty good. Go. Is the feeder wrapped up? Half a rod length further than the spot. Let's get it out. So, don't you near it, but right on the end of quite a fierce wind here. Um, making the spotting tricky, going off the mark slightly, which we can't have. You know, it's important to be really accurate. Just lost um, another take. Absolutely rattled off. It's like a proper take. I'm going to pick it up. It wasn't there. Um, heli rigs and barbless hooks. I think that's going to happen every now and then. Hopefully not too many times. So I'm very quickly going to just go through the rig and uh, how I prepare the ground bait in detail. So the rod that I'm using is the Triple Tip Trilogy rod. Um, and the tip that I've got on it is the power quiver, which is the equivalent to a 1.5. And on, um, on that, I've got a 4,000 size axis reel. It's loaded with 10 pound line, and let's go through exactly how I set up this rig. So the first thing I'm gonna put on is the heli rig. You can see they come mounted on a wire, put the line through the loop, and just feed the components onto the line. Once the heli rig's on, you'll end up with something that looks like that. If we move the heli rig up and out the way a little bit, the next thing that we're going to tie on is just a small clip to hold the feeder. And for that, I'm going to use a Grinner knot. So there you should just be able to see a small clip. Next, we're going to put on a combi feeder. That will come something like that. Uh, we're going to take the ends out because we're going to fish it open. So it'll be like that. We're just going to attach that to our clip. Now, some people use a sleeve over the clip. I'm not going to bother. So literally, now we've got something like that. Combi feeder, clip, heli rig. So now I just need to tie up the hook length. So for the hook length, I'm going to use eight pound smoke screen. I'm going to pull off about, I don't know, 10 inches or so of that. My final rig's only going to be four inches long. First thing I'm wanting to tie on is a quick stop because I'm, I'm going to make up a worm kebab rig. This is a bit tricky with old eyes, but we just need to get the line through the small hole and uh, use whatever knot you want really to secure that. I just do a quick blood knot. There we go. That's the quick stop on the end of the line. I'm going to tie on a barbless size 10 penetrator hook because it's barbless rules here. We go seven turns, always through the back of the eye 
when you're bringing it back through and there we go there's the hook and then all that leaves us to do is to do a figure of eight loop knot at the end I'm going to want this rig to be about four inches long it's worth saying if you don't want to faff around with all this you can get these hook lengths ready tied I've just pulling that figure of eight loop knot tight cut off the tag end and there you go a nice little rig ready to put onto the quick chain swivel that comes as part of the heli kit so just take the little sleeve off the heli kit put the sleeve onto a baking needle feed that down onto your rig and attach the loop knot to the quick chain swivel pull the sleeve up tight and so there we go there you have it you've now got the feeder, your main line, the heli kit, and your hook length coming off the heli kit, ready to attach your worms. Obviously, make sure that your hook length doesn't reach the feeder. You don't want the hook to get snared up in it. And so there you go, that is the final rig. As I said, I plugged the end of my feeder with ground bait and I'm just going to quickly take you through my ground bait mix. The first thing I do is I put in the krill and squid. I'm actually only going to put in about half a bag of this at the moment because that's all that I really need. To that, I'm literally just going to add a couple of handfuls of the small two millimetre pellets just to give it a little bit more substance, if you like, and put the tent grubbing around a bit. And finally, just two or three handfuls of the crushed hemp. You know, we know how much tench love uh, hemp, and this uh, has been a little bit of a game changer for me, I think, in the last couple of sessions. So to that, we're just gonna add a little bit of water, uh, not too much. I'd rather it be slightly dry than slightly wet. And I have found, you know, it doesn't take long for this to come together. I'll give it about like half an hour or so, and it's perfect. And there we go. You just want it that sort of consistency so it's just holding together. And once it's holding together like that, you know that it's gonna plug the feeder and hold your, those chop worms in just nicely. I think it's, this is probably a good example of, you know, sometimes you gotta stick with it um, on a new lake. You know, don't, I, I never expect to catch on my first session and I didn't. I came here, completely new, had a good look around, fished it, was sort of working it together, uh, working it out. And I, I always think of it as, you know, like a jigsaw puzzle, um, just trying to work out uh, the pieces, you know, and first session, nothing. Second session, felt like I was getting closer, you know, picked up a carp, uh, third session, and it feels like now we've nailed it. Um, I've got on the end of the wind, uh, the mild conditions has given me the confidence to give them some bait and they've got right on it. They really have, you know, double takes the lot. It's, it's a bit crazy. Um, I've had to bring the rods in while I took pictures of the fish and stuff like that. I didn't want any in the water while I was messing about with no rods in the water while I was sorting out the fish because it's been that crazy. Um, so I've got those sorted. I've got some more bait out there now. Got the rods out and uh yeah. let's see what happens there's one we're just starting to think that they've moved off and yes yeah, this one's gone happy days they are still there I'm trying to get into these roots just here Another nice fish. Maybe not quite as big as the others. <clears throat> a nice looking tench. This wind is crazy, isn't it? Get the net under it. Whoa. Oh, might be a bit bigger than I thought. Oh, cracking. Number four. Insane. Thank you. 
So, fourth fish, uh, just over seven pound this one. The others have been just under. This one is a male that's just over. So that's a lovely looking fish, look. Stunning, just over, it had gone quiet. Um, and I put a few spots of, of maggots and casters over the top, like three. And yeah, it, it brought on another bite. So it uh, just shows if nothing's happening, maybe try and trickle in a bit of bait. And we've got this lovely seven pounder. Fourth fish, it's really going well. Really going well, really pleased. Something I want to show you just quickly is this arrangement. Sometimes I like to use the heli rig on a lead free leader. Uh, you know, when I feel like I need a little bit more strength in the rig, you know, if I just think that there might be the odd snag around or slightly heavy feeders or, 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 or whatever. If I just feel like I lead, need a little bit more strength, I'll use a leader. And um, what I do is I will splice on a clip uh, just to hold the feeder. Um, and then I'll have a heli sleeve that goes over the clip and then onto the leader I just feed on two beads and they hold in place a quick change ring swivel for the rig. So that's an alternative if you feel that you need some extra strength at the end of your rig. So I'm going to show you me loading up the feeder as I say it's a worm kebab, there's the combi feeder. All I'm doing is I've got krill and squid ground bait, my sonny, bait, uh, sonny baits, it's got two mil pellets in there as well. Just gonna put a bit of that in the bottom, push it down. And then in this other little tub, I've got some chopped worms and I'm putting it in, making sure plenty of the soil goes in there as well. Because we want soil, we want the soil, they like um, that. So let's put a bit more ground bait in the top. So it's all plugged. And there we go, that's that loaded up. Let's get that out in the swim. There we go, so four fish now. <laughs> Wrapping it back around the six, seven and a half wraps. Spot is at seven, that's to allow for the drop. Oh Christ, talking and not counting. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. I can't count and talk at the same time. Get the rod back on the spot. Wind does make it a little bit tricky, but it's just a hammer going. So it's gone a bit quiet now. Um, yeah probably been a good hour or so since I've had any indications or anything. Well, what actually happened was when I had those two fish in the net, some guy came along the bank and uh, um, he saw what I had in the net. Um, and um, and he's, he's set up just along the bank and don't, don't blame him. You know, he, he sort of did it really, you know, I, I did say to him, you know, I think they're on the end of the wind, get on the end of the wind, told him exactly what I've been doing, what I've been spawning in what volumes. And sure enough, he sat up just along the bank and started spawning. But that's fine. Um, he obviously wanted to join the party and I don't blame him. I'll keep an eye on him. If he has a fish, of course, I'll be happy for him. Uh, but let's just hope that, uh, it doesn't affect my spot and let's let's hope I still get another fish or two. More spot out. Spot on. Putting just enough to keep them in the area. Each bite, about four more spots, so two over each rod. 
think you've just got a hold of me now. So just put a little bit more bait out because I haven't had anything for, I don't know, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. So literally not much at all. Two or three small spots. That's like three handfuls of bait just to try and get it going. Let's see what happens. Left hand rod just lifted up slightly there. that down to being a liner I think. Good sign that there are fish out there. Go on, rip off. Bank. Oh. oh he's not happy this one. Just sort of holding him. Not Pulling, just holding him, letting the rod do the work. Just trying to get control of him there, he goes in front of me now. So I think it's one of the big girls. All the ones I've had so far are sort of between six and a half and seven and a half. Come on, be one of the big ones. Be one of the big ones. Oh, he's coming into the bank again. He knows what he's doing, this one. Looks like a good one. Certainly one of the harder fighting ones we've had so far. Oh, he doesn't want to give up this one. Incredible. Not giving up this one. This is number five, unbelievably. In an afternoon. I mean, with the way he's fighting, you'd think he's bigger. Here he comes, here he comes. He's in. Whew, that's a fit fish. I don't know if he's bigger, but I mean, he's fitter. <laughs> Ooh, spots of bait. gone straight away just finished spotting and it's gone incredible literally feels like yeah you put plenty out there and you get one straight away <laughs> crazy this will be number six Quite incredible. Really, really got them going in this swim now. This is it with the tench. If you can get them going, and it can be quite amazing sport, you know? Didn't feel that big at first. But now it's pulling. Rod hooped over, just as we like it. There he goes, in he is. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I weighed the top one. He was uh, a couple of ounces under seven, so I'm assuming the other one's just a little bit lighter. But wow, yeah, they're all about the same size. Uh, if I catch them at this rate, I'm really hoping I might get one of the bigger ones. It's my sixth fish. Part of that double, I put the smaller one back. There we are, look. Oh, he's curling up a bit. A bit unhappy but he's uh he's about seven pound that one um they're all about seven pound that i've had so far all stunning fish um it feels like i'm gonna give it another hour or two I've, i'm gonna run out of bait <laughs> so i'll give it another hour or two and hope one of the bigger ones turns up not not that i'm bothered these are these are amazing these fish <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> 
So yeah, it's turned into a bit of a crazy one. Uh, we're on, on six or seven fish now. I think what's important is the bait application. I think I've, you know, I've done a reasonable job of getting that right. When I got here, I didn't heave out loads of bait. You know, remember, I'm just here for an afternoon, uh, maybe into the evening a bit, but you know, I'm not, I'm not here for a weekend or anything like that. So I've just put just enough bait out to get a bite. So that was two spawns over each rod when I first got here. Only the small spawn, it's only a half size spawn. So that's almost, you know, a couple of handfuls of bait over each rod. Uh, got a bite quite quickly, so I knew they were up for it. And then every bite that I've had, I've put two more spawns out. Um, and I've kept it that simple. You know, that means I'm only putting in enough to get a bite constantly. And uh, yeah, I'm pleased. It's worked, it's worked really well. Um, it's not an easy venue, this one. Um, and I have had a couple of sessions where I've struggled. So it's nice that finally I feel like I've uh, had some success. Uh, I wouldn't say I've completely unlocked the code. Uh, we'll know in a few more sessions time, you know, uh, you know, have I just caught it right? Is it just one of those red letters? I don't know, I don't care, I'm gonna enjoy it. <laughs> bait going out. I think if you're going to take anything away from this, it's if you're on a new venue, give yourself a bit of a break. It does take a few times to get into the rhythm of new venue. Uh, certainly uh, make sure that you're observant. That's what I try and do. Be really observant in terms of if you see fish moving anywhere, watch what other anglers are doing. You know, there's some very, very good anglers on this lake. You know, be observant, take it all in, be a sponge. And, and I think that's worked for me. Okay, so just quickly cut that, check this out from just a couple of days later. So I've come back a couple of days later just to see if I can get that, that bigger fish that I was hoping for <laughs> and check him out. What a unit, stunning. Uh, he's eight pound pretty much, he's like an ounce under. Uh, but this place has got bigger and we'll keep going to see if we can find one on a bit of a mission to get a double figure fish from here. But for now, that will do. What a breeze block. Absolutely stunning. Thanks for choosing to watch the video. If you enjoyed it, then please like and subscribe and all that stuff. Um, I'm not sure what I'll be fishing for next, but um, probably carry on doing a bit of this. I am enjoying it. Uh, I've got a big carp campaign going on in the background, uh, but we'll see. Uh, until the next one, look after yourselves and be lucky. Music